Have you ever seen someone pretend to drive an old car a bit like this? Well, if you're an old bloke like me, remember that old cars did actually drive like this. Back in the days of cross-ply tyres, inferior suspension and prehistoric worm screw type steering, it's a miracle cars drove straight at all. And in fact, they wouldn't without constant correction from the driver to compensate for inadequate steering geometry, not to mention the combination that steering has with woeful suspension. Now I'm getting tired just pretending. So, today we're going to pitch into oblivion this old worm and sector steering box and we're going to complement our RRS Phase 3 strut and brake kit with the RRS power rack and pinion setup and race bread power steering pump. And that means that jerky, sloppy steering is now a thing of the past. Combined with the strut and brake kit, this setup will well and truly give us the modern handling characteristics of a new car, but in old school iron. And how cool is that? And just how hard is this conversion? Well, it's not hard at all, really. In fact, the most difficult part is removing the old setup. With just eight bolts, your new rack is sitting strong in the engine bay. Now, you don't have to do all of this in one go like we are. You can install just one piece at a time because the RRS system is compatible with the original components and each piece is available separately. Here we have our clean canvas to play with. First, take the entire setup and just do a test fit. Hold the rack in place and familiarise yourself with its operation. There are many ways to skin a cat and here's the way I installed the rack. Start by removing the U-shaped adapter mounts and loosely fitting the mounting brackets to the chassis rails. Then tighten them up evenly. Check your rack by holding it in place again and then, rack aside, take an 8mm drill bit and proceed to drill the holes in the outer chassis rail edge Small warning though here, some chassis rails can be thinner than others. Next, fit the load spreader plates and tighten all the bolts using a little bit of thread locker on each bolt. At this point, just before I reinstall the rack back onto its mounts, it's a good idea to connect the two hydraulic lines in their places. It just makes it easier to fit than doing it later on. Pick up the U-shaped rubber-lined adapter mounts and bolt your rack in. Use a torque spanner and some thread locker to tighten your steering in its final position. Now carry on and link up the new steering to your RRS adjustable tie rod adapters. And what do you know? It's starting to look like a front end again. Just a couple more things to do. And about the only tricky bit you're going to run into is hitching your rack to the steering column. And in this case we're using an XW double tube collapsible column. And there's a lot of different types out there but the good news is that RRS can advise you on adapting just about any Ford column. When installing your adapted column, make sure that the firewall mounting bracket you use in no way can cause the steering shaft universal joint to bind up. It must operate freely lock to lock. Once you're happy with the path of rotation, you can bolt it in tight. Well there you have it, that's the RRS front end complete. And soon we'll take the car down to RRS HQ where Matthew Pankow will give the old girl a wheel alignment and give us some tips on how to achieve precision steering using the RRS system. And this setup, combined with the RRS independent three-link rear, will give this old Ford the ultimate in street machine superiority. No competitor in aftermarket modifications even comes close. That's RRS.